Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Oris, and in this episode of Postman Pointers, we're going to be sending requests in free requests and test scripts. Well, you're probably already familiar with this function called pm.sendRequest. It basically acts like any other HTTP request that we could send within Postman, but you can do it before the main Postman request or after the main Postman request. PM.SendRequest has many different uses, one of which being getting OAuth bearer tokens before sending your main Postman request in order to authenticate you properly. But you could do this for any other reason, such as getting other data or sending other data, depending on what your use cases are. With the Postman SDK, you can not only send requests using PM.SendRequest and the options that are available, but you could also format it in a different way or a more codified way that makes it easier to read and easier to use. So in this video, I want to dive right into what those options are and how I personally like to set them up. So to begin showing you this example of PM.SendRequest, I've created a send request snippets collection in my Dev Odyssey public workspace. I'll leave a link to that Dev Odyssey public workspace in the description below. And in addition, I'll leave a link to the learning.postman.com website where you can see some of the examples that they have for PM.SendRequest that were also an inspiration to this video, in addition to their SDK collection files that they have. So let's go ahead and look at the PM.SendRequest snippets. In this request, I made a simple get request to google.com just for the sake of having something there. And we're really gonna focus on the pre-request script and the test script sections. Looking at the pre-request script, here we can see we have a couple examples. These are examples that I did get from learning.postman.com, so you can use that as a follow along as I go through this. One way you can use pm.sendRequest is by simply just defining a URL and that's it. In this case, it's going to do a simple GET request, and in this case to HTTPS postman-echo.com. We catch the error object and the response object, and then in the if else block we have below, we just log them to console. This is probably the most basic way you can use pm.sendRequest. If we scroll down, we can see another example with pm.sendRequest, where we are creating first a constant object in Node.js, and we call it post request. So in this case, we're actually predefining the post request before we're going to pass it off to the send request function in this Node.js script. So here we have many options that we can define. So we can define a URL such as we did above, but in this case, we explicitly define it. And when here we use postman echo.com forward slash post. We also have a method we define for the request, which is a post in this case a header object as well, which we can define with any header and value combination here. So one example is content type and then application JSON or whatever header you want. So as a random example like foo bar. Then next we go to the actual body of the request and here there are different modes we can use. One of the most common ones you'll probably use is raw, but you'll use also something like URL encoded, which is common. And here we just create a stringified JSON object of uh, attribute of greeting and then the value of hello world. And then lastly, all we have to do is pass that post request object to pm.sendRequest. And then we're also capturing the error in response again. And here we just simply log the error if the error exists. Otherwise we log the response JSON. Now let's move over to where my favorite use of pm.sendRequest is and that's in the test script section. So before I begin, this is probably going to be a lot longer of a script, and that's because it's way more codified the way I've done it. My personal preference is when I actually do coding, I like to define the types explicitly, and that's because it really creates the sense of strictness, but also the ease of readability. It doesn't leave anything up to guessing, or I try to minimize how much guessing you have to do, so that if someone else were reading this, they could see it and read it legibly. It's like reading a well-written book while reading something that's just an outline with pieces missing. So in this case, I've defined a few modules in here. Then I have built the request object out like I did before. And then I pass that request object off into the send request and that's it. So here, let's go over a few of these things. 
Here we have the actual request object I created, which here I just do a require on the Postman collection, and I input the request module. Same thing with the request body, I get the request body module. The request auth, I do that as well here. Header, proxy config, which basically allows us to actually send our request through a proxy if we need to. And then the certificate as well. So if we need to do a mutual authentication, I believe, or some reason we need a certificate in order to do an authentication using TLS, we can do that here. So first, what I do is I create the headers array. And in here, I'm creating a new instance of the header class. And all I'm doing here is defining a key value pair of content type and the value being application JSON. So as you can see already, this is a bit more verbose and actually could be a little bit less readable depending on who you ask. But because we're using strictly defined types, it helps with compilation of the code so that the compiler doesn't have to guess what type something is. Then from this content type header, I create a headers array and all I do is pass that content type header between two brackets, which defines an array. Next, I have a auth object here. I could not use the actual auth module or the auth class for this example because every time I tried to use it as request auth and then I started filling in the type, it just failed on me. It didn't work at all. So all I did was used it in the options method that I defined it in the pre-request script. So I basically copied the same way, but ideally you would perform or do this the same way as you would with the above object using headers. Here we define a type of basic for the auth and then we have the basic attribute as well, and then defining how we're going to be using that basic authentication. So in this case, we have a username as the key, and then the value is postman. So our username's value is postman, and then the key password defines the password for the basic authentication, and then the value is the actual password. In this case, it's just secrets. Next, we create a request body using JSON. So all I do is I create an empty data object, and then I fill it with a greeting attribute, and then the hello world value for that. Then we have the body here, which I create a new request body, and the mode is then raw. And then for the value for raw, we have a stringified version of that JSON object we just created. Lastly, here we put it all together, and so for the URL, we have a simple URL there as we did before, but in this case, we're using HTTP bin. The method, then we define as post. Then the header, we actually just pass in that headers object we created. The auth object, we just pass in that auth options object. But again, if the request auth module worked and the way we could do it in the SDK actually worked, we pass that actual auth object in there with that same auth type of that request auth type. And then lastly, we pass in the body object, which is just a, a request body type object. Then at the end, we pass that whole request object we created into pm.sendRequest, capture the error, and then the response. And then, in this case, when I get the response, it actually comes back as a buffer. And so in order to actually view this buffer as a string, I capture the buffer using the buffer object or the buffer class in Node.js, and I capture the response.stream JSON, which then just has this buffer in there. Then I create a response string by using the buffer I define and just using the two string method. And then lastly, we log that response string to the console. In this case, it's just gonna end up being some JSON response. But this way, when we see it, it actually validates that the way we sent it is the way we expected it to go out. So the response will just echo back to us what we sent out and it's a good way of doing validation. So let's go ahead and if we first look, we can see we have the postman echo that post, which this was from the actual pre-request script we've done. So you could see here, uh, they sent in the way that we expected it to. And then we also have a response body. It's very well broken down and see we have greeting of hello world, etc., and just all the other attributes in there, including headers, and anything that really defines a request has been explicitly in here. Obviously, we also have the Google request that we did. We can ignore that because we don't really care. 
And then lastly, the third one here, which is what I want to go over more. This is the response that we get from HTTP bin. So first you could see that in the authorization headers, we actually have a basic authorization. So this I know actually worked because I have the basic authorization that I'm expecting. If I really wanted to validate it, I could just base64 decode this and see that it's just a combination of username, colon, and password, which would be postman, colon, secrets. Then we could see the content type uh, application JSON header made it. We have a postman token, which just gets inserted because postman does that automatically on the fly. Here we could see the actual JSON response, which is just a greeting of hello world, so we know that worked. And then we have the URL here as well, which is just http bin.org forward slash post. So this really validates to us that the data that we sent came back, and therefore all the stuff in the Postman request object that we configured using those modules actually worked. And that about covers it for this video on pm.send request and my Postman pointer to you. Thanks for following me in this journey. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this content or other content around IT tools and technologies, especially around Postman or HTTP requests or anything with web development, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. So let me know how you use PM.send request. You use it the same way as I do, by defining different classes that are used in the options, or do you just go ahead and create some JSON object, throw it right in there, and send it off? Let me know and we can talk about it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.